Hi again, everyone. In this video, we will start learning about the modern evidence of plate tectonics. And there are two lessons goals for this video. The first one is to help you to recognize main bathymetric features of the seafloor. And the second one is to be able to describe how the exploration of bathymetry led to the discovery of seafloor spreading. Okay, so first of all, I want to mention that bathymetry is simply a measurement of the depth of the ocean floor. And it's actually pretty amazing if you think about it that, you know, in the first half of the 20th century, we simply had no idea how the ocean bathymetry looked like. Um, not until in the early 1950s, when we have a group of scientists in Columbia University who began to map the ocean floor using a cosine. Okay. Now, uh, just to briefly, uh, just to briefly explain what a cosine is, um, it actually uses a fairly simple geophysical geophysical concept using sound waves. And the sound waves travel from a source point on the surface, um, and in this case, from a ship that will travel downward and bounces off the seafloor and returns to the ship on the surface. Now, because we know at least two things from here, right? We know um, the, the speed of the sound wave that travel inside the water, and then we can actually measure uh, the travel time of the sound waves to get back to the ship. So using a simple calculation, we can actually figure out the depth of the seafloor in that particular area. Okay, so in this opportunity, I'd like to take a moment to appreciate one of the scientists um, that worked uh, in the project uh, from Columbia University that mapped the seafloor in detail. And her name is Marie Tart. okay? Because I'd like to take this opportunity to, to appreciate her work because I know there are many women scientists in the old days or even in the, in the recent times who have faced discrimination simply because of her gender. And in this course, I'd like to take this opportunity to celebrate her contribution in um, you know, finding one of the most fundamental concepts in geology called the plate tectonics theory, okay? So Marie Tarp, she was the one who produced the world's first map of ocean bathymetry. And one of her most important discoveries is actually this extremely long bathymetric feature that is located right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean that I'm highlighting in yellow right there. And it is called the Mid-Ocean Ridge, okay? Or because it is right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, some people call it the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So Mid-Ocean Ridge is, is such an important feature that I have to create one single video for, for this topic. Um, some of the characteristics that I'd like to mention of Mid-Ocean Ridge is that first, it is bathymetrically higher than the flat seafloor around it or the abyssal plain on both sides of the ridge. And it also has a prominent V-shaped valley which is present right at the ridge axis. And then the third one is that if we look at, look at these ridges in more detail, we can actually the, we can actually see that um, the Middle Ocean ridges are actually not continuous across uh, uh, some sort of like a boundary there called the uh, called fracture zones. Okay, um, and I would like to show you how Middle Ocean ridges looks like in cross section. So this figure right here is a cross section that is represented by that yellow line on that map right there. So it goes from uh, North American continent, maybe somewhere in Florida, and then it goes along the ocean basin all the way until um, the western part of the African continent. And you can see that, um, you know, we have a mirror image that kind of like, you know, the, the mid-ocean ridge acts like a mirror, right? Because we have uh, continental shelves in both sides of the uh, ocean basin. And then you go from, uh, from continental shelf, which is the uh, shallow ocean, and then it suddenly it drops down to abyssal plain, right? So we have the abyssal plain, which is the flat um, uh, 
uh, seafloor. And one of the most important things that you have to understand is that abyssal plain actually covers the largest area of the ocean basins. And then from the ocean uh, abyssal plain, we start to have that elevated um, area right in the middle of the ocean. And that is what we call as mid ocean ridge. And then if you notice that there's a, a little V-shaped uh, feature right at its axis, okay? So that's how mid-ocean ridge looks like on cross sections. Another characteristic that I would like to mention here is that as we move away from the mid-ocean ridge, um, the sediment, so this is the mid-ocean ridge, and the sediment is represented by that yellow section right there. The sediment actually becomes both older and thicker as we go from mid-ocean ridge towards the deeper parts of the ocean. So therefore, it actually tells us something. Um, it indicates that the indicates that the oceanic crust in mid-ocean ridges is actually younger than the deeper parts of the ocean floor, okay? So that's one concept that you have to understand that mid-ocean ridges, the, the crust, the oceanic crust right here is younger than the oceanic crust you know, in the deeper parts of the ocean that way, okay? All right, the next characteristics that I'd like to mention as well is the, you know, about the earthquake distribution. So this map right here, it actually shows us these little red dots that represent um, earthquake epicenters. So as you can see that the earthquake distribution in ocean basins, they trace the outline of mid-ocean ridges. Uh, not only that, it also uh, outlines the deep ocean trenches as well as fracture zones in ocean basins, okay? Now, this also tells us that mid-ocean ridges are actually, you know, geologically active sites. The last characteristics of mid-ocean ridge is coming from the observation of global heat flux as this figure illustrated. Um, so this figure simply tells us that, you know, uh, where on earth that we would find anomalous, anomalously hot regions or cold regions, as simple as that, okay? And we can see that most of, you know, all mid-ocean ridges on this, uh, on this map um, has, um, you know, red indicators, meaning that these ridges are typically hotter than the rest of the seafloor, indicating that we have some sort of uh, magmatic or volcanic activity that are going on along these ridges, okay? Now, based on all of those observations that I have mentioned earlier, uh, another scientist in the uh, 1960s came up with uh, an interpretation. So he compiled all this observation and he proposed that mid-ocean ridges are actually sites for several things. First, there are sites for seafloor spreading. Okay, seafloor spreading mean literally this is the site where the seafloor are spreading apart from each other and moving away from each other. And the second one is that um, it all, they also, there are also sites for formation of new oceanic crust. And last but not least, they are the sites where we would find active magmatic or volcanic activity, okay? So in this example, uh, seafloor spreading or mid-ocean ridge would be represented by this area right here. This is where magma from the, uh, the mantle uh, coming out to the surface. And then once you have the magma coming, once you have mag magma that reaches uh, the surface, it will solidify and becomes new rocks or new oceanic crust, okay? And these are all possible because the movement of the seafloor that are moving away from each other, okay? That creates some space right in the middle. Okay, so I think uh, those are all the things that I'd like to mention in this video. Um, um, in, in the next couple of video, we are still going to learn about some geophysical evidence for plate tectonic theory as well as plate boundaries. Okay, if you do have questions like usual, just let me know. 
and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.